Hi everyone, welcome to AI Learn Painting. I am Robin. When I first started painting, I mostly focused on landscape paintings. Needless to say, landscape paintings are easy to paint, and many objects like clouds and trees in nature have endless shapes, so they are hard to mess up. Portrait paintings, on the other hand, are more complicated. I gradually started to paint animal portraits after a few successful landscape paintings. There are two things I found most difficult and I've been exploring methods to solve them. So today I am going to share with you my personal techniques of how to paint animal portraits. One of the major obstacles is the amount of details. When you are looking at your furry friend or just a picture of an animal, you will probably pick up thousands of details, like how their eyes look, the color of their nose, and the direction of their hairs. For a beginner painter, it is almost impossible to put every detail on the canvas, and you really don't need to, because paintings are not meant to replicate those photos exactly. The photos are just reference, and we will need to reduce the amount of details to make sure the painting can match our skill level. The method I always use is to change the photo into Impressionism style. Impressionism was an influential art movement emerged in France in the 1860s and 1870s. The Impressionists rejected realistic painting of the academic art establishment, instead embracing a new style with loose brushwork, vivid colors, and the fleeting effects of light and color. These features are very beginner-friendly. The most famous Impressionist artist is Claude Monet, and look at his famous water lily painting. You don't see lots of detailed water lilies, but there is no doubt the lilies are there. So for the painting today, I am going to use Mid Journey to generate an Impressionism painting of a white Scotty dog. I used a very simple prompt and the result is very promising. You can also upload a few pictures of your pet and ask Mid Journey to change them to Impressionism style. Now we have the reference photo ready, let's talk about the second biggest obstacles, the sketch part. I didn't take any sketch lessons, so I don't have much experience. I struggle with sketching just like you. For an animal portrait like this, it is very important to accurately sketch the animal because we don't want a disproportionate dog or a dog with skewed eyes. My technique is to grid the reference photo and my canvas. By dividing them into smaller pieces, I only need to focus on a smaller piece at a time, and it is easier to locate the smaller pieces like the eyes and nose. I used a free app on iPhone called Grid Shell. This is not an advertisement, you can use any tool you can find online or in App Store, or you can do it in an old and fashioned way, print it and grid it. I first grid my reference photo 3x3. This can give me a general idea of where my dog should locate. With the grid, it is very clear that the dog should be in the center and the eyes are on the top middle squares. Nose and mouth will be in the middle square. The next step is to grid the picture into even smaller pieces. This time, I used the green line to divide each of the previous big squares into 16 smaller squares. This made things much easier. Now I know the nose located across these two squares, and I can pretty much sketch the whole painting now. If you still find it difficult, you can increase the number of grids again. One thing to notice is that when choosing how many rows and columns for your grid, you will need to consider the dimension of your canvas, because you will still need to draw the grids on canvas. For example, I created 12 rows and 12 columns because I'm using a 12 by 12 canvas. So each of the grid is one by one, and that is easy to find out with my ruler. If I want to use a 12 by 16 canvas, I might want to do 12 rows and 16 columns and when dividing my reference photo. 
The hardest part is down, and now I am going to paint my Scotty dog in acrylic. The reference photo looks like the dog is stepping on water during sunset, so I'm covering the top part of the background with orange and some yellow and blue to suggest the sunset sky. The bottom part is blue. I used a combination of light and dark blue as well as some white to suggest the water surface. For the dog part, I know the dog is white, but here we cannot use white directly. Since we want to present a live and vivid dog, it is important to paint with layers. I start with a base layer with unbleached titanium. Notice that I follow the direction of the dog hairs. This is also crucial to help build up the layers of the hairs. Next, I am going to paint the eyes, nose, mouth, and ears before I lose my sketch. Don't forget to highlight the eyes and nose to create a 3D effect. Now let's continue to build our layers. I use raw sienna mixed with white to paint the hairs around the mouth, and I use burnt amber mixed with white to darken some areas. For the final layer, I use pure titanium white to highlight the hairs. When doing this layer, don't completely cover the previous layers. As you can see, even though I painted the dog with off-white, orange, and brown layers, it is still no doubt a white dog. And more importantly, because of the shadow and highlights, it is three-dimensional. This is the finished Scotty dog painting. The impressionism and sketching techniques I introduced in this video can be applied to any painting and it really helps beginners to paint more complicated pieces easily. I encourage each and every one of you to experiment with these techniques. I would love to see what you come up with, so feel free to share your creations in the comment section below. Let's inspire and support each other on this creative journey. Thank you for watching today's tutorial. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more exciting AI-related painting content. Until next time, happy image generation and happy painting.